and thank you for joining us for Introducing Friends. Today's episode for Introducing Friends will be Warhammer 40,000, Brother Alphabusa's If the Emperor Had a Text-to-Speech Device. Leading the discussions will be our chapter master, George, a.k.a. Wolfboy. Leading the, dis- leading the discussions will be George, a.k.a. Wolfboy. Joining him will be James, a.k.a. Griever. Also joining will be Chelsea, a.k.a. Stargal. See, this is what happens when you put me in charge of IT. We, we need to leave the warp. We need to leave the warp. Like, I, I enjoy the warp, but I'm tired. Yeah. I'm tired. I've been holding the Gellerfield, or some equivalent to it, the entire time. I'm tired. The lower levels are lost, by the way. Uh, what well, I mean they're not lost? There are people still working there. If there's still people by this point, yes, they're still working well, it down there. Depends or at on least... your definition of people. Uh, all of the humans are gone. I should say that. But I, I'm just tired, man. Yeah, we I... need to go. <sighs> but no, just... the, the the entities down there are will, still doing the work, at least. It's like free yeah, labor. This is what happens when you put me in charge of IT work. You're supposed to fix the things on the ship. Yeah. No. 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 See. See. I fix the armor. I fix the weapons, and I fix the hull. And you fix I the ship. Fix the computers. That's what we have mechanicus is for. No, 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 no. Because our computer is illegal to them. Well, then we need Geek Squad or something. Yeah, You're assuming they have all been lobotomized and turned into servers at this point. Anyway, just cut, just cut all your warp. Beasts a little closer there, Charles. We definitely appreciate you doing this for us, those who are surviving in the upper decks. I'm Thank so you. So tired. Where's my AI for Dummy's book? I can can I can I drop a couple more levels? No. Please. No, because any more levels than that, then we're gonna be losing supplies for food. We still need to go through another week. I mean, they'll still give us food. I talked to one of them earlier. They brought me something from the lower levels. What did I tell you about taking deals from demons? It wasn't a deal. Actually, the deal... Okay, fine, if you want to call it a deal, it was more along the lines of bring me the apple pie or I kill you. The apple pie is non-negotiable. It it was pretty good apple pie. Uh, Here we go. Chapter 6. You've pissed off the AI and don't know what to do. Okay. Do you want some pie? Where did you get that edition of the book? Um, Where I don't know, it's in the forge. Huh. Oh. I'm really. I'm have pretty to... sure the other inhabitants are not all the way up there yet. Step one. I'm pretty sure. Step one, bend Three more over, days. grab ankles. That's all I ask. Everything from there, I guess we can pretty much do a free-for-all. Two. Step two. I'm, I'm bleeding out my eyeballs. Oh, oh fuck. That's what this book is useless! Is. I mean, I could have told you that. What just happened? <laughs> the book is useless. Well, yeah. I asked what edition it was, and... Meh. Anyway. Uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're doing normal things, so that way normal C can be established on our wonderful ship. I am glad to be back. Uh, we did have some Hello, faulty parts. Uh, we're not completely gone, so here we are. Not yet. Okay, please keep it up, Joss. I beg you. It's you. dude. I'm literally. I'm dropping some of the lower, some more lower decks. I mean, the other inhabitants are nice. They're doing their job. I just that we can do with less people, right? Less humans. When we leave the warp, I swear, if we need those guns on the lower decks, I'm holding you responsible for that. We have people to man the guns. Well, people. It's a matter of getting those guns quickly enough in case there's a threat. You know what galaxy we're in. Anyway. So we're back. Uh, We are going to be taking a dive into if the Emperor had a text-to-speech device... And continuing our wonderful rabbit hole that is the Brother Alphabusa YouTube channel. And to be honest, we uh, 
have a, quite a medley of shorts that we're going to be taking on, and we're only going to be doing uh, one episode in particular this time around. Uh, time constraints and all. No thanks to things going crazy. But we will be pretty much uh, doing a lot of absolutely lovely slapstick and to kind of take our minds off of all the horrible things that we're surrounded by on the daily. So you guys uh, ready for uh, some of this madness? Yes. I actually have no idea what we're watching. <laughs> like you told me ahead of time, but I did not look it up. So I, this is going to be a fun surprise for me. Oh, it's going to be fun indeed. That's okay. I never know what we're doing. And that's what we love about you, Dark Angel. You've known some of it. He's he's retaining more as we go. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's get in on this wonderful short, Lucius, uh, Luscious Lucius Pranks. Uh, no. Okay, sounds like it's going to be interesting. What? <laughs> no. Oh, Turn Chelsea's wrong. This is going to be wonderful. Hey there, girl pals. It's your boy Lucius here. I just hate him. With another oh, this thing. Today, we're yeah. Bringing the Elder on a craft world. Check it out, guys. Hey, oh, I got my spirit stone. Child spawn, get here! I eat booty pixies, and how about this? If you lose to me in the game of sword fight, I get a really, really, really more kiss! Kill it! My Elden Ark! Stop it! Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Boys, it's your boy Lucius here, coming at you with another very serious social experiment. Many right. kids He's are capable. running around out there with latent psychic abilities. How no. easy is it for a war predator to pick up an underage child using the war? I chatted up What the fuck? No, it's game. creepy as fuck. I've been talking with him for the last three or four days. Like, it's... Yeah, no. Hey, little boy! I'm a little girl! What? I am the little girl! I was the little girl all alone! Do I fulfill your fantasy? Ho ho ho! Yes, I am you, Melda! This is what you get for being a psycho, Billy! Shit again! Hey, 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 sexually oh, ambiguous pal again. toys! In our galaxy, totally total line there. billions of people are starving and without small, cramped tiny spaces to live in! So I've taken time out of my day and made this sandwich, which I'm going to be giving to a hobo. Everyone will appreciate it as we make the galaxy a better place. I forgot that that song was in there. Remember me? Oh, no. Shame on this. Am I dying? You small. See, I'm your boy Lucius, and I came here today. I know you've been having some hard times, all right? So I want to give you this here sandwich. Mostly out of freshly, freshly milk, Damon had milk, if you know what I'm saying. And sand, lots of sand, it's a sandwich after all, bitch. Now eat it up! Please, <laughs> Please remember to like, favorite, oh, and subscribe oh, to my channel, Luscious Lucius Pranks, and follow me on Facebook for the latest sex pranks. This is your boy Lucius. See you soon. Well, that was an experience. Uh, 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 uh. I have such hatred in my soul. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I hate how on brand it is for Lucius too. So, uh, I I feel like I should shower. 
Yeah, yeah. The Slaneshi will do that to you. <laughs> Shower and lie. Yeah. <laughs> but now you know the horror. And you can, with me, forget about it all over again. Oh, the mind cleanser's back up and running? No, I just block out my own memories. Isn't that dangerous to do? Oh, well, I can't say that. Yeah, you, re- you really want to go with, with that? You really want to go there, Space Wolf? You really want to go there? <laughs> I, don't want to, I, I don't need to give you any more ammunition than you already have. Besides, I have so want... many. For instant, no, we're not going to get into this. Today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we, we need the ship to stay together, please. <laughs> Dark no, no, no. You were privy to one of those fights, and it was funny as heck to me. Oh, yeah, it was. Uh, it was. I, it was, and and sadly, I I I was like, po- I was poking the uh, the wolf, so to speak, and I actually had a question myself. <laughs> like, wait, am I falling to chaos? What what what's going on here? <laughs> it was wonderful, absolutely. This it was why, so much fun. This is why you don't talk to a space wolf sober. Anyway, so I guess we're. <laughs> Going to be good to go on to the next one? Yes, please. Is it not as fucked up as that last one? No, nothing is as fucked up as that last one. Oh, thank God. All right. I'm um, mostly I'm, sure. Oh, I don't actually my remember. My mistake. I misspoke. Thank the Emperor. Ugh. <laughs> yes. Nasty man. All right. Let's go into Chaplain Grimaldus of the Black Templars Ruins Sanguinala. Wait, Grimaldus? Yeah, Grimaldus. Oh, this ought to be interesting. The time of reckoning is now. That wretched bloody angel cry fest is banned! You, you cannot just ban Sanguinilla, Lord Grimaldus. Why the fuck not? It's heretical to you. You're heretical! <laughs> fuck you! Fuck the Black Templar! <laughs> 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 You know what that reminds me of mm. is oh I love the movie it's um Robin Hood Prince of Thieves uh-huh when he's having a very bad or when the sheriff of Nottingham's had a terrible terrible day and he's trying to like save money or raising taxes and everything and one of the final things he says is and uh was it and cancel christmas <laughs> and it's just great cuz the other people are just like he can't they you just kind of look at that. each other, and then he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Also, mm. Alan Rickman is the best. Not about the best, but... Alan Rickman is fantastic, okay? Okay. It, okay. Fantastic is, is something you and I can both agree on, on a rare occasion that you and I do. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to our next short, since it's definitely fitting. Happy Sanguinala! All right. (laughs) (laughs) Just sobbing to themselves. I love that the cry fest actually is a cry fest. (laughs) It really is. I mean, crouch and weep. They 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 they're doing it for sang- Sanguinius who died horribly at the hands of Horus, but still <laughs> can't help but laugh at them. A Sanguinius, little. the psychopath, excellent. I won't go that far, you. I would. Of course, you would. He oh. was. You can't deny that he was. Okay. It's eccentric. Okay, I your did. Primarch. If I'm going to point out, your Primarch oh, is God. the one who said. That he was, what was the exact quote? It was something, I make play at being a beast, and he is. It was more of Sanguinius' comparison to Lehman. Sanguinius admitted that when he looked upon Lehman, he saw someone that was of, of royal backing, pretending to be a savage and pretending to be a beast. Whereas he saw himself as being a beast pretending to be of royal lineage. 
In other words, they okay. he, he saw Lehman as his opposite in, in temperament. Yeah, and if you want to think that your Lehman is oh so noble, and I will agree he's noble, um, is noble and proud and in a right mind, then what does that make Sanguinius? I'll let the Blood Angels go hammer in the comment section. Go for it. He was, okay, you, the motif is vampire. That doesn't exactly come with a sound mind. Listen, all the awful stuff associated with, you know what, I don't know if I should really be talking about it in open channels, but uh, it's really only one chapter in particular that's just really egregious about their GNC defect. Okay, yeah, I'll agree with that. But that's st the fact that it still exists in all of them, plus the whole rage thing. They go into what would normally be called a blood rage, or blind rage, the, blood the, rage. The red thirst and the yeah. black rage, yeah. Where yeah. basically they have to consume blood and the black rage, where all of a sudden they see themselves in the place of Sanguinius at his death, seeing Horus wherever they see an enemy or friend alike, and savagely attack them nonstop in a maddened Completely fury. sound of mind there. It's it's just a defect born from the psychic link. It's I just lament for them quite hard. He's sad, but you know what else is sad? Hmm. A planet of innocence getting burned alive. You uh, you talking about my boy Vulcan there? No, I'm talking about my people. Nah, you furry nah. freak bastard. <laughs> <sighs> Shall we do the next one, then? Yeah, I think that's probably the wisest decision. Mm-hmm. And our next one? The Grey Knights discover the... Oh, no. <laughs> I remember this one. The what? You'll see. Oh, okay. Grandmaster Coven, we have been informed of a new threat preying upon the Golembris cattle. As illustrious shepherds of mankind, we must act. Take this report, and look upon this bewhiskered menace. Digger knobs! <laughs> Absolve me on my negligence, Grandmaster. What was it you said? Digger knobs! No, I I'm fairly sure those are wolf- Fools! Behold! Grandmaster, I do not wish to be brash. But these fiends are not all cosplayers. They are vile space wolves that have succumbed to their unclean genes and turned to menacing beasts. We have to hunt and purge them. Fuck you! Diggernobs! Affirmative, Grandmaster. They are indeed Diggernobs. Good! <laughs> oh, they're so dumb. <laughs> I will always hold the Grey Knights to that level of idiocy. I'm just going to go yeah. on record and say that. Yeah, they definitely didn't get Magnus's smarts. No, they did not. <sighs> and to bring you up to speed about the about everything that was on screen just now, so you know how there's a Gene C defect with the Space Wolves that they can literally yeah. turn into basically the werewolf hybrids. boys. Yeah, you've mentioned those things before. Yeah, well, uh, essentially this is kind of taking a jab, especially since the Grey Knights and the Space Wolves don't get along well at all due to the months of shame. So that's kind of a dig at that. But it's also kind of a dig over on um, on Games Workshops because of the fact that they came out with the Diganobs, which are essentially humans that, <laughs> get this, live alongside orcs in orc society by pretending to be orcs. Just don't judge. You want to be an orc? Sure, you're an orc. Our next video. No. Unsubtle criticism starring the Adeptist Arbites. This poor hobo, he just got tormented by the creep of all creeps, and now there's this. This is gonna be fun. 
Attention, citizen! Multiple third-party individuals have reported one or more of your recent actions as being inappropriate. What? One day, citizen is notified in such a manner, said citizen is reviewed by members of the Adeptus Arbites in accordance to the Book of Judgment. Upon review, we have determined that the following actions are in violation of the Book of Judgment. Covering your civilian relief rations with ground-up rotent flesh as to make it more edible. Your imperial right of existence has received one judgment which will expire upon your deathbed. Additional violation may result in disabling of your legs or the permanent termination of your life. But but, but Please note that killing yourself will not resolve the judgment on your existence as you will be reassembled as a semi-sentient servitor until your tithe has been paid to the Imperium. But, but I didn't do anything wrong. Yep. If you wish to form an appeal to the Adeptus Arbites as to counteract your judgment, please inform us as to why you believe the judgment to be wrongful in 20 words or less. No, 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 sir. I covered it in rat dust cause my children did not want to eat the Russians. They are literally composed gods. You have reached over sounds. your maximum <laughs> word count. We in the Adeptus Arbide shall now process your appeal. Until then, your legs shall be disabled and your food supply shall be limited to one and a half rations per week. We appreciate your understanding. I don't understand anything. Too bad. <laughs> Or over, <laughs> over <laughs> tears. <laughs> just standing there, just listening to the Please side. Please answer me. Why aren't you doing anything? I'm so scared. What am I gonna do? <laughs> so, sir, sir, please help me. I'm being unjustly judged. I didn't mean to do anything bad. Did you, did you cover your civilian relief rations in ground up rodent and flesh? We just needed more nutrients. We were barely alive as it is. Well, I was the one who reported you. But, but why? I, yeah, seriously, you, why? Uh, Tarnish the name of the Department of Munitorum and the Empress Mercy Bars brand by publicly sparing rat dust over it and having your family consume it. I just wanted to brighten my family's day. If you and your extended family do not regurgitate the Emperor's mercy falls over. bars within the next 24 hours, we will report you for defamation. <laughs> what? <laughs> 45 what? degrees? Your bars taste like shit! Greetings, Arbitrator. I would like to file two judgments upon Imperial Citizen 9548733 and Designation Orier for publicly harassing the Department of Munitorum and thus the Administratum at large, and for not giving back the bars he owes us. Attention, citizen! Multiple <laughs> third party individuals have reported one or more of your recent actions as being inappropriate. Once a citizen is notified in such a matter, said citizen is reviewed by members of the Adeptus Arbites in accordance to the Book of Judgment. Upon review, we have determined that the following actions are in violation of the Book of Judgment. Not puking up rations, being an uppity asshole. This is the <laughs> second and third judgment upon your Imperial right of existence. Accordingly, we will rag your face and burn your corpse like the heretic you are. <laughs> Sorry, we cannot accept additional appeals for your innocence at this time, as one of your appeals is still pending. What am I supposed to do then? We appreciate your understanding. Fuck you! I'm joining chaos! <laughs> I'm just here joining chaos! <laughs> Attention, heretic! Multiple third party individuals have reported one or more of your recent actions as being inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one. Makes me sad. Was that Zorin, though? Yeah, that was definitely Zorin's voice. I never re realized that until now. Uh, he does a perfect hobo voice, I gotta tell you. Gosh. Attention, citizens! 
Honestly, the, the whole VTuber thing that he's been doing recently has actually been kind of fun since he's been doing I multiple really characters. enjoy I really enjoy listening to Zorn. Because I don't often have it open where I can watch it, but I like to listen because I'm at work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trust me, you're not going to be in trouble with me uh, with regards to doing that during your work as long as you get the job done. <clears throat> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but I, I love how in the ending scene there, just as the fire is about to hit them, he just zaps out. You see, like, the purple mist of chaos <laughs> just then. Oh, did it, wait, do it again. I didn't see that before. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get it to about here. Man, <sighs> gotta love compelling screen by screen. Action. Yes. There you go. Oh, there it is. He joined Chaos. I'm getting away. Oh. Yay. Good for him. Hobo's <laughs> going to have a lot of judgments against him. Yeah. Who's going to judge him? Everyone's dead. And honestly, he's being judged for. <sighs> Given the dystopian world we kind of live in, it just. No, fuck the Arbides. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of wondering when you were going to come to that realization. No, 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 I can't, that's why I said when it finished, this makes me sad. Mm -hmm. But now that you know he got away with it. Now that I go, he got away, it makes me happy. <laughs> it was a happy Yay. story all along. <laughs> Yay, he got away. Uh, from the psychopaths. Good for the hobo. Good for him. I'll just keep that note right there for the Inquisition. Da, da, da. What the fuck are they gonna do? Uh, I'm just covering my ass here. <laughs> yeah, and I'll just point them to you. Like, <laughs> I'll remind you whose ship we're on. Mine. And who did you get it from then? We don't talk about what happened to that Inquisitor. Uh huh, we're on an Inquisitor ship. The Inquisition doesn't give a shit because you- I've been feeding them false reports! You can't even read! Okay, first off, I can read. I have no standards. That's a standard. surprise, Space Wolf. Oh, now you're just really trying to dig under the skin there. Hey, I Chelsea, what was the name of the uh, ship again? Oh, no. You're gonna censor me again, so I'm not gonna say it! Well, considering the state that it's in, it's probably not going to last long anyway. Given... Okay, I was proud of the name. I have to say, I was proud of the name. Uh, no, I honestly, it's been so long since we've actually said it, I've actually forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what a good censor does. <laughs> oh god, I kind of hated my, myself for admitting that. Mm-hmm. All I all I keep remembering is the bad jokes that eventually pissed you off, which is why I don't do them anymore. And then I actually forgot what the real name was. <clears throat> it's VTM. Short four. I know you're gonna censor me, <laughs> yeah, so I don't want to say it. You'll be surprised. Go on. I don't. I don't like that sound. It's really annoying. Just do it. What is it called? The Valle Tantum Mendacium. Which translates to a very terrible lie. A very great lie. Yeah. Hope it's been worth the wait, guys. <laughs> See? No clown goblins. Oh... Hey, at least we don't have any Hartlequins in the Blorp. True. I think at this point the new lower level residents would deal with them. You would think. But they're actually kind of good and I kind of don't want to admit that. What, the Harlequins? Or the lower level residents? Because they're doing a bang up job right now. You should go down there. It is clean. It is spotless. And everything's organized. It's lovely. I want to believe you, but... For all I know, there could be a nerd light garden growing right there. No, 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 no. You really think I'd let one of them on my ship? Yes. No, to I hate them. They're gross yes. and they smell. No, they're gross up. and they yes. smell. I believe you no. would. 
No, no, no. They're gross and they smell. So, no. There's no Nurgleites on this ship. If you say so. There's no Slaneshi on the ship. There's no Cornate on the ship. I mean, you get what you get with the Cornates. Yeah, but they make a mess, is the thing. Me. Yeah, true. And I don't want a mess down there. It's gross. Then I have to clean up my robes. So we just have my boys. There's a couple sons down there. They know what they're doing with the ship. I'm sorry. What did you just say was on the ship? Some residents to help since the lower levels were lost. We got dustbins on the ship, apparently. Okay, adding that to the to-do list. They know what they're doing. They're sweet boys. They're part of my book club. That's who you... <clears throat> Gotta keep better stock of the ship, I swear. Hey, they brought good books. God. Hey, 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 hey. Don't, don't diss Agatha Christie. It's a great read. Dear God, Emperor Wyatt. Because I run your ship and stitch your soldiers. Ha 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 ha. I don't know, she's singing. Yeah, let's move on before then this breaks out into a full on uh, Disney production. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> kind of broke character there. <laughs> okay. Girl, you just honestly laughing. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> was that a break or you just honestly laughed me? That was an honest laugh. <laughs> that was... Just a quiet little fuck you. <laughs> I think I'm not, I don't know why. Okay. All right. So we're on to our actual episode. If the Emperor had a text speech device, episode 20. You're green with it. It's been so long, I don't even remember the last thing that happened. What? What? <laughs> oh, babies. <laughs> it's really quiet today. <laughs> Here he is, the big himbo. Congratulations, my friends. Through the power of friendship, you have found all the artifacts. And now I have returned to bring peace and friendship to the entire Imperium, no matter what the voices in my head say. You are weak, Vulcan. Shut your mouth, oh, Vulcan. Ferris. Yeah. Vulcan. You are not friend. Yes, yes. Find it. Find Pausing it real Lord quick. Uh, all right. Sorry about that. I was just dropping off a book. Oh God! Just for the love of. Oh come on! He's allowed in the upper levels. He's not a demon. I mean, your wards don't work on him. Ship is falling apart, and some of the wards need to be retuned. I either way, he was just dropping off a book. It's all. Uh... No, don't, don't, don't. It's a sweet book. I'd recommend it to you if I thought you could read it. I can read. Oh, really? You want to read Persuasion? Oh God, that sounds like a bore. No, it's wonderful. Anywho, let's go. Fine. Uh, yeah. Oh, Vulcan. The sweet, sweet boy that is Vulcan. A heart bigger than brain. Yeah, he's a himbo. 
I forgot how epic that intro is. It's a pretty Love great it. intro. Hello, my lord. Good. My sentient newspaper has arrived. Before we speak, <laughs> um, Holy crap. Do you have any idea where Magnus is? I've lost track of him. You lost track of a 12-foot doll demon man as bright red as a dying star. That is truly a great but. achievement. I know where he is, however. <laughs> He is busy writing up the first volume of my soon-to-be smash hit book, The Emperor's Guide to the Galaxy, was shorter than that. like I asked. Understood. <laughs> I was worried you'd be off sacrificing children or something. Yeah, I never mind. We have just received the message. Yeah, we're not talking about that. Let me guess. They actually managed to do it. They found the missing artifacts of Vulcan. <laughs> yes. That is thoroughly inconceivable. So the relics that the salamanders have been trying to track down for millennia were found by the ultramarines in less than a year. Indeed. I did tell you earlier, my lord, they are pretty great. Almost too great? Actually, not almost, just fourth right Ultra ridiculously great. great. I mean, seriously, what exactly makes those baby blue ball busters greater than the Geckoman at being space marines? Well, my lord, <laughs> I'm honestly not sure. I do have a few theories, though. One is that the ultramarines are simply more versatile. As proven in their combat techniques, they're skilled at using a wide variety of weaponry and tactics. While the Salamanders are just about as focused on Pyromania as the Sisters of Battle are. Hold up. I must have forgotten, in my infinite wisdom, about some religious order during the Purge of Terra. These Sisters of Battle Yo speak of Strike oh, Me no. as not being full of muscle bound battle buddies with exclusively floppy productive organs. What precisely oh, are these phrase. sisters? Well, that's a. The that's something. The one I brought in here to stop Goge Van Dyer during the Age of Apostasy? My non-existent genitalia are still trembling in uncertainty. Essentially, it's an organization of people like her. They're the military arm of the Adeptus Sororitas, which you yourself talked about during the latest answer session. You know, the ones you sent out your erogenous finettes to. Oh yes, them. Yeah, he that scarcely that. sounds so grievous after all, seeing as they eliminated that person with the most evil sounding name I have ever heard, I am most certain they are sensible and rational people. Yeah. Well, uh, sensible and rational. Yes, those are. There's something. But the Adeptus Sororitas can use them for destructive yeah. purposes. If someone would try to prank call me in the future for unspecified reasons, I will be most happy to hear about them later. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, there. To the topic. Any other ideas about what the are doing that? Well, my second theory. No. no. Maybe we'll explain later. Is that I'm fairly sure okay. who's generally a better color than green. You know how orcs lose most of the time? I'm confused and curious. First off, that is fucking stupid. The fact that gold exists makes every other color equally inferior. Secondly, before you go on complaining about the salamander's scheme, you should see their original paint job. Did someone smear fermented crops waste over them? It did not fly well with the Mechanicus because of how many seizures the paint job prompted, so they went fuck it and slapped a plain coat of green over them instead. Continuing on to my third point, while still speaking about colors, the salamanders generally make your regular civilians and whatnot more worried because they are all black. What? Oh, Their skin color is black, my lord. They look very unnatural and quite frightening. That statement would be so damn hysterical if it did not make me cry tears of your disappointment from my skull. What do you mean, my lord? <laughs> Yo, and by extension most likely the rest of the Imperium, have gone back to the ideals of ancient times, when people bounced around and inanely judged each other's characters solely upon the hue of their epidermis. What? What? This is exactly why regular humans cannot be left unchecked for a single fucking second, before they start blaming and belaming each other. I keep on trying to make humanity function on its own. But it just will not stop. Well, my lord, I think Actually, you... I am going to act like a brain dead fucking mortal now to Oh boy. I have not seen what sort of coloration you have underneath that golden mirror you call a suit of armor in over ten thousand years. Let me see what kind of pigment your corporeal container has, and I will figuratively pour acid salt all over it. Wait, I am so confused, my lord, why I got ice lighting up in the same back. Don't work for wait, what the heck are you doing now? <laughs> George, you know what I'm gonna say. <laughs> what was she thinking? What the fuck? Ow. <laughs> My lord, what was... Was that really necessary? You're black. But you are shit-talking other blacks. I am confused. Black? No, I'm not. Yes, you fucking are. Have you been in that shimmering shell of yours for so long that you forgot you had something under it? 
Gold is not a skin color, unfortunately. No, I'd call it, uh, like, brownish. I don't know, it's just some standard skin color, not black like the salamanders. Then what in the fuck are you trying to say? Well, my lord, I mean, uh, you know, the salamanders all have a literally pitch black exterior with almost coal-like skin texture and red glowing eyes. It's like they are bathing in burning promethium on a daily basis. What are you even on about, Goldilocks? I am honestly surprised you don't know about this, my lord. I'm certain the salamanders have always looked like that. Your memory must be distorted from all the smooth, lubricated skin you have consistently been exposed to for these past 10,000 years. Your mind has started fantasizing about big, exotic, crust-covered men that come and take you away to the lands of a thousand volcano cannons exploding in your face. That might be true, but it does not affect my argument. Look, uh, you see it here. Uh, uh. By Terrestis, that is new. I do not remember this being a thing. Is my mind playing tricks on me? Knowing the state of my memory, perhaps I did forget. Now I just feel like some kind of huge dick. I feel that your heart is in the right place, but you can't be blamed for your degraded memory of things. Yes, that is correct. As you know, I am always in the right. So, uh, can I have my armor back? I fear the other custodians will come and lubricate my revealed body parts. And start with <laughs> chest like muscular bongos and. You are such a fragile little butterflower, aren't you? <laughs> so, please enlighten me. What in the shaticular showboat actually happened to the salamanders to make them look like this? I am positive at least Vulcan had flesh similar to yours. As bad as my memory is, I should be right about that at least. I mean, I am his fucking father, after all. I'm fairly certain all salamanders, including Vulcan, have always looked like that, my lord. I am murderously sure I gave all my children natural human pigments. Why would I ever decide to treat one of my infant sons to a bath in a pit of flaming tar? I am unsure Magnus and Korax have natural pigments. Shut up mm. and explain. <laughs> well, uh, I believe their pigment was actually affected over time by their home world of Nocturne. Their gene seed does a chemical reaction to the radiation upon the planet, which inherently turns all salamanders jet black, also shifting their eyes to a fiery red. No, that is just fucking stupid. Why would the one chapter that happened to have people of black pigment as a majority end up turning into vituperative fucking caricatures of their past selves? Must be. That shit squid cinch again. And now to get the blood angels <laughs> Cuban wings and the space wolves, the wrinkly faces of pubs, all according to my ever growing <laughs> schemes. <laughs> um, my lord? I have to ask, do their appearance really matter if they are still loyal and excel as a chapter? Yes. I mean, no. I mean... Screw this quandary with a fucking jackhammer. Let us just talk about whatever we were discussing before this shitstorm started flailing about the room. Fair enough, my lord. As I was about to say, another difference between the Ultramarines and the Salamanders are that, while the Salamanders follow the Codex Astartes, they also follow a set of their own doctrines exclusive to the chapter. Oh, brilliant. More rules I have not been told about. First off, the Salamanders <laughs> are very self-reliant and individual for being Astartes. Each Salamander is taught how to repair and improve his own war gear, effectively making them all blacksmiths. No pun intended. Thanks to this, the Salamanders have a lot of mastercraft weaponry and armor in comparison to other Astartes chapters. This is a useful trait when combined with their lace and pyromania. T-O-A-S-T-Y-Y-Y, Hilda. Speaking of which, just to establish their tactical powers, <laughs> several millennia ago, the Salamanders oh, decided to fill an entire city with Promethea to destroy a orc invasion. The good news is that it worked. The fire even eradicates all orc spores, stopping any chance of a horde re 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 The bad news is, well, they lit a city on fire. Well, that is... Okay. Also, in the case of super heavy vehicles, they primarily tend to use the Land Raider Redeemer, which is basically two gargantuan flamers in the shape of a tank. As great as that sounds, it also sounds incredibly unconventional. Not to mention, they also literally wear fire on their armor. Time out. Are you earnest in this claim? For fuck's sake, do they have a who can't stay on fire the longest contest as well? Or what? Well, maybe not that. But an ancient ritual amongst the Salamanders is that when one of their battle brothers grows too old, is dishonored, or is crippled and unable to fight, they will undergo a ceremony which involves them walking out into the fiery desert to meet their death in flames. What the fuck? Another one of their customs is that when a Salamander <laughs> actually dies, their body will be cremated in ritualistic fashion in the flames of a giant volcano called Mount Deathfire. Is this a space marine chapter, or a death metal band? If they do not manage to get the fallen Astartes back to Nocturne to be cremated, 
His battle brothers perform a local cremation ritual in which they light the deceased on fire and then all stick their arms into the flames. Now I am starting to feel uncomfortable. But when a captain of the Salamanders dies, a grand ceremony is initiated when they strap the dead captain to a giant slab of ceramite coated marble. Two battle brothers dressed in simple robes then proceed to lower the slab and the captain into a pool of lava. The battle brothers chosen to do this would have their own hands scalded with the white hot chains that suspended the slab as they lowered it down. They have to do it in perfect unison, as the chains are engraved with the Salamander's iconography, making the Battle Brothers' hands a permanent third degree burnt with the semblance of a hammer, an anvil, and a flame upon their palms. Now this is just becoming fetishistic. With the death of a captain, a new one has to ascend to the ranks, of course. In the Ritual of Ascension, they take the soon-to-be captain and strip him down to only his sash. He is then branded with a mark on his chest and shoulder as to signify his captainship. Then he is placed upon a platform in his undraped splendor, and is subject to an extreme pillar-like inferno launched from below that surrounds him for a few seconds. The ritual is then concluded with the words, Vulcan's fire burns in my breast. With it I shall smite the foes of the Emperor. They are taking that passage pretty damn literally it seems. Seriously. Is this troubling craving for the flames inside effect of me placing them a bit too close to some candles when they were just little gene seeds in a tube? Why do so many of my sons have such revolting compulsions? Oh my lord, it's not your fault. Because they take after correct. their father. I never do anything wrong ever. So, you like, he never does anything anyway, wrong. Even if he has such a place of fixation, uh -huh. they are still one of your finest. What would they you are a chapter that, despite yes. the opposing looks, do an outstanding job caring for and protecting civilians, often acting as rear guard in several confrontations. That must go superbly for them, considering well, their specialization with such they care about civilians weaponry. The population is always grateful for it. One instance was that during the Second War of Armageddon, when all the chapters involved were waging war on all different fronts, the Salamanders picked up the dangerously neglected task of handling supplies, escorting refugees, and helping the defenseless. In the battles upon the planet of Armageddon, the Salamanders fought for the planet's people, and generally frowned upon the notion that the populace of the Imperium were of no worth. These ideals were actually so strongly held by the Salamanders that their chapter master, Tushan, came blows with the first captain of a chapter known as the Marines Malevolent. The captain had early bombarded a refugee camp that had been ambushed by orcs, he said that he didn't have time to waste on saving the civilians. This greatly angered Tushan and made the Marines Malevolent generally seem like total arse clowns. Those Marines See? Malevolent seem to be suffering from GOG Evandire Syndrome. Seriously, who in their right mind openly names their chapter Malevolent? Nobody! The Marines Malevolent don't seem to have anything right about them. Even their color scheme seems rather obnoxious. It is like they took the Salamander's previous color scheme, and removed everything even remotely good about it. I will have to pencil in a virus bombing upon this abomination. On a side note, it is a good thing Yo inserted the Summit Visualizer into the Golden Throne. It makes exposition much easier. Agreed, my lord. Either way, I hope you do see how the Salamanders are still one of your finest in this regard. They stay true to their Primarch and you in both code and mannerisms. Yes, that is all absolutely fantastic, but there is just one problem. Pyrophilia, my lord? Other than that, at the beginning of this conversation, I actually asked you to provide evidence that the Ultramarines are greater than the Salamanders. Now you have just set them up to be creepy but nice guys with a thing for helping people. And fire. Oh. Um. Well, uh... They found the artifacts before the salamanders? I want to say you are not proving a fucking thing, but I cannot say that without being wrong, and I am of course never wrong as already established. Well, my lord, the Ultramarines will most likely live long, eventually fading into legend with their deeds and self-publicism. But the salamanders will continue to burn like a mighty flame in the hearts of the people they have defended. It is better to burn out than to fade away. Yes indeed, my lord. Yes indeed. Seriously though, next time I meet Vulcan I am going to tell him to take his sons on a field trip to a freezing cold ice planet for a couple of years so they can reorient their fucking perspective. Life's not all fire and flames, am I right my lord? No, especially in the case of the mangy for balls of Fenris. Right. I bet Lee Man and his band of puppies are still sitting about trying to figure out how friction works. <laughs> Actually, those should tell me about their drunken tirades next. Ah, right, right, of course my lord. No! Oh. You must not speak of the wolves. Who dares suddenly interject things in my presence? Oh look, it is my precious little century bubble. 
How is my sweetheart doing today? Father, your sweetheart was I. Rogal Dorn. It's adorable. <laughs> yeah, Rogal Dorn. Adorable's wonderful. What? He he was the centurion all this time. My lord. Who was that? Ah! Yes. What is it you want? Hmm. You didn't hear anything, right? Not that we were talking about anything. We just, we just like. I wonder what chapter this and, is. Uh, whispering nice things into each other's ears. I know, Lord Israel. Is it the fortieth time you've told me? But you may wish to know we have pursued the most mysterious lead you wished us to follow. And we've once again found the lost strike cruiser. Your feet have got Emperor's Tempers, Israel, did you hear that? We're totally gonna find Cypher now! It's your boys, James. Well, there's blood all over the floor now. I, I really don't want to get that on my armor. It's all murky, probably stains easily. Well, we'll soon be making fall upon the planet to which we've been led. That is all. Thank you, dismissed. Oh, remember to close the door, but not too harshly. Yes, Lord Benayon. I won't close the automatic door too harshly. Did he just... sass mouth me? Brothers, we're in some deep shit now. Find Cypher, the Inquisition will be after us for sure. They'll start noticing that one of their Inquisitors are missing. Hey, we're not Supreme Grandmaster. We hit the corpse of that stupid Inquisitor in a place where no one will find him. Hacked up his small dried up bits, put him into small packages, and donated his food rations to the death corpse of Kree. Do those Kree fellows even eat? I don't know! We don't have time for this, Asmodei! Cypher and the Fallen are escaping further away from us the longer we linger! We have to- Excuse me, my lord. Ah! No, you heard nothing! I mean, yes, you heard something, but it was certainly nothing suspicious and secretly heretical. Damn it, what do you want? I'm sorry to disturb you again, but we have discovered sentient activity upon the planet's surface. What?! No! I mean, yes! What is it? It appears to be the Adeptus Mechanicus, my lords. The Adeptus Mechanicus arrived in the planet before us? Oh, this is such a shameful moment. I, I, I'm totally useless. Nobody loves me. This, this can only mean one thing. One terrifying thing. The Adeptus Mechanicus is working for the Fallen! My lord, why the Fallen? Make him repent, Asmodeus. Repent, motherfucker! It's your boys, That's James. What's that? It said it's your boys. Oh, fucking time. <laughs> as crazy as they are. Not crazy, they're just... Oh they're... no, they're a bit crazy. They're constantly looking over their shoulders, chasing shadows and whatnot. Paranoia. Yeah. The the best best not paranoid from the right. Here's a question, though. What would if you took a bunch of Fenrisians mm. and a bunch of you know I don't actually remember what the name of the Salamander's home planet is? Uh, Nocturne. Nocturnes Nocturne? or if you took a bunch of Fenrisians and most of Noc I'm gonna go Nocturnians and you switched them, would it be like if you were in the United States and you got some Northerners in the South and some Southerners in the North? Complaining about the heat and the cold? No, it would be the equivalent of taking someone from Maine and swapping them with someone from Nevada. It's not entirely the same, but, you know. If we're, yeah, if we're really going to go into the extremes here. <laughs> yeah, I think George is a little bit more accurate on that one. It'd be like taking someone from Ottawa and putting them in Death Valley. Oof. Or Ottawan. Live, probably, depending on how much water you have. Uh, it, it'll live, it doesn't melt. You don't melt, it's just you find different ways to deal with the heat. 
It just comes down to whether or not your body adjusts quickly enough to the temperature shift. <laughs> How quickly does it adjust to the temperature shift? Yeah, pretty much. So, yeah. But I've right. lived in both areas. I've lived in a super cold place and a super hot place. And man, but the adjusting I, time sucks. I, I will say this. I usually will accept the heat more so than the cold normally. But to quote Chromar, you know... At least when it's cold, you can keep layering yourself to get warm. You can only take so much off before it becomes a public nuisance. And that's why I like I would rather be cold than warm. That uh, would also be my position as well. Having lived in a burning desert, I would rather be cold than warm. See, I've always been weird. I've always been good with heat if it was dry. Like oh, I no, no, no. not you're, come on. you're not gonna bring that whole dry heat crap onto this. It's discussion, a dry right? heat. There's no such thing as a dry heat. There's just heat, and then there's not heat. There's oh no, there's heat. a big difference because I will say this: when I went on my honeymoon, and we were down in the Caribbean, it was like 85 degrees on a tropical island with no humidity. There was not a bead of sweat on my forehead. I'm having trouble comprehending no humidity in a tropical island. Yeah, there was like no humidity whatsoever. That doesn't make any sense. Doesn't sound like it was a tropical island at all. Yeah. A Caribbean island, which, whatever. Wait, 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 no, 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 about, but here, here's what, the thing. What time of the year did you go down? April. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. No. And, and I really say doesn't. that with respect because honestly, I, I, I was in Brazil uh, for their winter, and to be honest, I got to experience like what a what a uh, a really bad cold in a tropical area can be like. But I wouldn't say that it didn't have humidity issues per se. But it was it was definitely winter. You felt winter there. You're talking about April. Middle of uh, of the of the warm up, not so much at the beginning of it, but in the middle of it. Yeah. If you live in the Caribbean <laughs> and you're listening to this, let us know what winter is like and if you have humidity. Hey, all I know is it was 85 and it was gorgeous. Meanwhile, it could be in New Jersey. It's like 70 degrees in October. And if humidity is over 60%, I'm dripping with sweat. Mm. Well, Again, with the places I've lived, I've lived where there's a lot of humidity, and I right now I'm living where there's less humidity. And yet the dry heat is at the most maybe 5, 10 degrees difference between shade and the sun, but it's still 90 degrees outside. Dry heat doesn't mean anything. It's still hot. I don't know. I'm just explaining how things work with me. I guess the 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 pipings, I, it's just, it's just more of wrapping my head around the whole weather in tropical area, whether or not that makes sense mentally. To find out and experience it for myself, that sounds great. <laughs> Would you I like used to have a, uh, to sponsor you a trip then. <laughs> hey, hey, I used to have a uh, customer who actually used to uh, vacation down in Aruba all like a lot, mm. and he used and he would. He absolutely loved it because he always said, even though it's Aruba, very little humidity. Strange to me. Hmm. It's it, to me, it's strange to be surrounded by water and have no humidity. Maybe if you're high up. No. But then, how would you have a beach if you're high up? I know. The the the, the thought did cross my mind. Well. <clears throat> Anyhow, we, we we strayed way off topic. Um, so that was your green with it. Uh, anyone got questions to poke at? Let's see, Adeptus or Artas. They're uh, the um, hmm. they're a militaristic female force who are zealots. Go figure. Um, yeah, they don't have any gene seed in, so they're not marines. They're just humans. Uh, nuns with guns. Yep. Oh, okay. Bolter bitches. Um, what's what's the other one? No. 
Okay. I'm sure there was one more. I feel like there is, but I don't remember it. Hmm. Well, all I know is that they're scary to me just on the fact that they're nuns. So I'll just leave it at that. Uh, so that's the Adeptus Sororitas. Uh, any other questions from this episode? Happy to see Dodorable. I forgot that he showed up. Ah, uh, yes. Rogel Dor. I am adorable. Yes, that manly face and bright yellow imperial fist armor. I can't do have to, to say, I don't... Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, I can't wait to actually do a whole lore discussion on him, because that's going to be fun. I can't yeah. believe he was the Centauro bubble this whole time. Can't tell if you're being serious and you're just out of it, or if you're trying to lie. <laughs> no, I really had no idea that it was okay. him under the armor. <laughs> like it's honestly, when you first said "What? It's him?" It sounded like a kid at Christmas. Like what? I got this when they clearly went down the night before. No, I, no, that was that was honestly genuine. I really had no okay. idea Rogel Torn was the Saturi bubble. <laughs> yes, the Saturi bear is adorable. Who has a very I don't remember the name of the actor, but his he has a very impressive voice. It's wonderful. That must agree. He he has that very, very strong. I really don't know how to really explain it other than strong, masculine, and yet very, very calming. Those are the three words I'd pick. Anything else would just sound weird. Okay. He has a lovely voice to listen to. Very. But yeah, apparently Rogaldorn is uh, the centurion. And my boys finally showed up. Hmm? Yeah, well, part of your boys showed up. They're not the Raven Some Guard, but they're... Dark Angels! They're yeah. Dark Angel boys! The Dark Angels, yep. They made their appearance finally, and we get to see them in all of their huddled, secretive glory. Any questions in about that? In their, them, um, glory. Well. They're still, they're still a very, very respected uh, Space Marine chapter. Even though they bombarded Fenris from the rock. Yeah. Of course, I can't really be too mad at them, given the fact that they were tricked into doing it by the Thousand Suns. What are you talking about? I definitely wasn't a part of that. So, the story behind that uh, basically would be a demon of Zinch's camp was able to trick... Sorry. They were able to trick the, the Space Wolves to basically be down away from their homeworld, Magnus and his boys basically came full force to invade the Fenrisian system. And in the process of doing so, they also tricked the uh, Dark Angels with false reports that the Space Wolves had turned traitor and demons were going over the Fenrisian sector due to their rituals and whatnot. So the wonderful oh. leadership of the Dark Angels... In all their fleet, along with the Rock, their base of operations came to the <laughs> Fenrisian system and started bombarding the crap out of the surface. Oh no! Ragnarok. Oh, devastating! Yeah. The poor little space wolves. Hey, Magnus took an axe to the face, and Corn laughed. So I'll leave it at that. The poor little space wolves were tricked. Oh no no no! I, I, I will say this. This is why I'm part of the Raven Wings. They're still part of the Dark Angels. They're a mm -hmm. sub faction. They are. They are the second chapter. If I no, not chapter. Uh, second. Uh, second company. Second company. Yes. Oh, thank you. I have to know something about what I'm part of. <laughs> But yeah, the Dark Angels as a whole, it's like, ugh. and their secretiveness and their mentioning of the Fallen, yeah, that pretty much goes on brand with them taking extreme measures to basically destroy whatever remains of the traitorous ilk that was among their ranks in number. 
And and may they burn in the pits of hell. I mean, most of them do. Actually, there's even uh, reports that some Black Shields were former uh, Dark Angel Fallen that revoked their ties to the Dark Angels and tried to hide their past that are part of the 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 Death Watch Inquisition. But no one can confirm that since most Black Shields are essentially, you know, never talked about outside of the Inquisition circles, so... And mm-hmm. funny, funny thing, Dark Angels are actually known that just on the rumor that there was a bunch of traitorous Dark Angels, or Fallen, uh, during a campaign that they were providing fire support, they literally just up sticks, abandoned their post, left to go chase after the rumor and deal with it. I don't remember all the specifics behind that, and I'm sure someone in the comment section will definitely correct me on that and i do hope they do because honestly it's always fun to to learn something new or get refreshed on things that i don't remember completely but yeah they they take the the stain on their honor very very thoroughly and very seriously and you can tell these guys are higher ups on the dark angels due to the fact that they're wearing robes mm-hmm. <laughs> they're clothed they got clothes on top of their armor <laughs> You can tell these guys are important because they're wearing clothes. I, I didn't take it to that extent, but since, you, since you're going down that path, I mean, I guess you're not wrong. <laughs> oh, goodness. I don't know why that's funny to me. Yeah. Now, the members that you do see here are basically the chapter master, the reclusiarch, or their equivalent of that, essentially their chaplain, head chaplain, oh. and the captain of the first company, Belial. <laughs> Belial, Asmodai, and the the chapter master, they, they're, they're hilariously animated in this, and I don't remember exactly the reason why Belial has this disposition of being meek and, uh, you know, thinking that everyone dislikes him. I think that may have something to do with the uh, the Death Watch video game, but I'm not too sure about that itself. And the fact that they have him... I'm so uh, proud of the three of them. I, I re- I'm really enjoying Asmodai. Oh, yeah. Asmodai. Voiced by uh, by Brother Alphabusa himself, actually. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. I diced hey. up that Inquisitor and, f- and put them into the rations for the Death Course of Krieg. Do they even eat? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, those poor guys. Yeah, one day we'll talk about the Death Corps of Krieg. They're, uh... They're Until story. then, I'll just feel bad for them. Yeah. Anywho. Hey, that wasn't the hobo, was it? Hmm? Uh-huh. That no, that's not the hobo. No. Okay. No, not the hobo. It would have been funny, though. <laughs> All right. Wait, could the Death Corps of Krieg take out Lucius? No. They have pride? They're still human. Okay. They're fanatics. Well, I mean, but, but you could still potentially human. say the Raven Guard is human, too. Like, they're not quite human, but they're human? I mean, that's still, that's still the same argument I'd use against them failing just in general, but they have a better shot than most. <laughs> you guys are so pathetic! We're going to have you kill this dude. (laughs) Man, only we can deal with it. Yay. (laughs) Oh. But yeah, that covers uh, uh, these guys and your Dark Angels in full view. Plus the fact that we actually get to see uh, Brother Alphabus' interpretation of The Rock, which is pretty interesting considering the fact that that's all that's left of their their home world... uh, uh, Caliban <laughs> during the civil war between the loyalist and heretical factions of the Dark Angels. And essentially that's all that's left of their planet. They literally make an entire ship out of it that pretty much goes from system to system. That's what they operate out of. Yeah, we work with what we got. Yeah. That's the gay bar? Yes. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. The Emperor was the one who made the joke first. I know. Oh, goodness. <laughs> the 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> James, that's perfect. Dude. It's just dumb enough <laughs> to be funny. No, no, no that's fine. <laughs> Uh, and yes, they are after Cypher, the man that we saw on that planet before, who was on top of the giant speaker. I just oh, okay. it to myself. I'm so mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. So yeah, I, I can't wait to see more shenanigans with regards to them, because they're, they're just a big barrel load of fun. All right. I guess uh, we can kind of do a light lore dive. There's not really too much that isn't already self-explanatory through most of this episode, as we covered like a chapter pretty thoroughly in this episode. Yeah, I was so, going to say, Kitten pretty well covered what the salamander. He's were. the walking encyclopedia. Yeah, the sentient we, newspaper. The sentient newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Kitten's just the best. Thunderstriker, thank you for making such a wonderful character and voicing him. But we are um, very grateful. Oh, that we are. So, starting off, the planet of Nocturne. So, Nocturne is a very um, dangerous and inhospitable world. It's like every other. Well, not like every other, but okay. Well, are there any good worlds though? Like every world we hear about, there's something wrong with it. Uh, McCrag, in the Ultramar system. Go figure, it's there. Yeah, yeah. We don't talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, basically, Nocturne is essentially a death world. It's extremely hostile to pretty much most life that exists upon it. And the few humans that do inhabit it, inhabit it in pretty much tribal, uh, small communities that are spaced out quite far apart from each other because it's basically burning searing volcanic desert that will literally incinerate you if you're not careful there are even points of the ground where it will just randomly open up and you basically get billowed out with lava or streams of poisonous gas that can kill you instantaneously from one hot hot breath burning your lungs oh, fun yeah, fun's a word for it um so on this planet vulcan was pretty much placed there by the chaos gods and he was incorporated into this tribal society but what gained him a lot of respect and and notoriety on the planet of nocturne was when the dark eldar would come in to swoop in and harass kill maim capture and enslave uh what few humans they could off of this planet he was able to actually craft weapons for the populace to actually repel the Dark Eldar back. And because of that, he was elevated to a high-level position to lead the tribe that he was a part of. Later on, when the Emperor found him, the Emperor basically did a trial to... Well, participated in, in a, a trial to, I think, take over the planet of Nocturne itself. But at one point during the hunt against one of the most dangerous animals on there, the Fire Drake, uh, Vulcan almost got killed and the Emperor intervened to save his life. And Vulcan basically swore his life to the Emperor at that point, at that day. He didn't know he was the Emperor at the time or his father. And when it was revealed, that's when, you know, it solidified Vulcan's trust. And pretty much this planet is self-explanatory with all the fire and death. But because of Vulcan's ingenuity and his master craftsmanship that he just naturally has, he was able to make it a more comfortable place for his people and basically make Nocturne what it is in the later millenniums. And it is uh, surrounded by a moon that the salamanders are based out of. So that covers that. And going forward a little bit, let's talk about the uh, the uh, artifacts that are there. Yeah, the TTS crew don't really know what all the artifacts are, but essentially the, the big joke would be if it was in the hands of a master craftsman and we're talking about a day and age where technology is so misunderstood and not understood thoroughly at all, you would think that a 3D printer would basically be magic, or even oh, that 
that god awful green uh car i think that's a renault a horrible little devilish french little tiny electric car the what is something of woe the engine of woe <laughs> the engine of woe <laughs> That's what it was. But then we also have like the salamander tank, and you know, it's pretty st- pretty standard tank. Was there like from a there. golden card in there at some point? There was. To be honest, I didn't really read it. Hold on, let me get to that. There. What? Can you? Can we see what that is at all? If anybody knows what that is, because I can't read that. I'm afraid. Neither can I. I can't really read that. Alpha, if you ever see this, one, we love you, man. We love you. Two, what is that? Eh, can't read it. Don't know what it says. But yeah, they were able to find all these artifacts and somehow that was supposed to bring back Vulcan and bring back the the glory days of the Imperium. Because at one point in time, Vulcan was... Uh, was essentially slated to become the Emperor's replacement to lead the Imperium. But then the Orcs attacked, and he had to go and fight an Orc war boss and kill him, and died in the process, and then disappeared. No one could find his body. And that was the last anyone had ever heard of Vulcan. So, hopefully we'll be able to get a, you know, a breakdown on what exactly happened after the fact. But yeah, Vulcan's back, and he's also being haunted by <laughs> a little, uh, a little ghost. Now, you are weak, Vulcan. Shut your face, head ghost Ferris. You are not Fred. Uh, ghost Ferris face Ferris. Ferris. Now, James, to bring you up to speed, this ghost, especially since it's just a head, uh, is essentially one of the other Primarchs of the Iron Hands. The Iron Hands are essentially space marines that are very, very close to the Mechanicus. Do you remember Jerizian from Hell's Reach, the guy with the mechanical arms, the Doc Ock space marine? Yes. Think that, but an entire space marine chapter of that. Ooh. Yeah, these guys Ooh, are okay. very dedicated to technology and this, the, the development of such. Or trying to develop. So yeah, he he would be the primarch of them. Sadly, early on in the Horus Heresy, he was actually beheaded by Fulgrim and subsequent killed, mm-hmm. leaving uh, Vulcan and his brother uh, Corvus Corax during the Isvan Three massacre to essentially try their best to survive. Corvus, I believe, uh, manages to escape, but Vulcan gets captured by the Chaos Faction and subsequently tortured. Because they couldn't kill him. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But that explains who that, that uh, decapitated floating head is. And why he uh, says, you're not you friend. You are weak, Vulcan. And the saddest thing, that was actually Ferris Manus' opinion of Vulcan. Well, Ferris Manus is also a. I'm not gonna say that out loud. Shitty, shitty person. Mm, not really. He understood just how strong Vulcan could be. It's just the fact that Vulcan's attachment to humanity is something that he always thought as a weakness. Oh no! You like humanity, and therefore are more human for it. It's and you're not a pathetic machine who doesn't know right from wrong. Oh, no. I wouldn't go so far as to say that he was anything like uh, the Iron Warriors uh, Primarch. But he, he he was definitely someone that was very aggressive in his tactics. And because of that, he was thoroughly defeated because his brothers knew exactly how to how to deal with him at that point. And no one expected to literally fight brother against brother in Isvan 3. So that was a massacre true to the name. So yeah. Now moving on a little bit further. Ah uh, yes, the discussion about the baby blue bone busters. <laughs> Sorry, that's always Goodness. funny. 
the the ultramarines being better than the the uh, salamanders. So realistically, if you look at the strengths and limitations between the two of them and why the ultramarines get more done, I mean, the Captain General does make a point that the ultramarines do have a much more varied uh, set of weapons and skill sets, which is absolutely fantastic. But the salamanders, they basically stick to using flamethrowers, pyro, incendiary weapons as their mainstay. Mainly for the fact that that's kind of like a callback to their their homeworld. They're literally bringing the, the wrath of Nocturne upon their enemies. But if we also look at the fact that when you look at the vehicle warfare aspect of things, they don't really have much in terms of like... Uh, like the Raven Wing having uh, assault bikes. They Ooh. don't use that. And part of the reason in lore is due to the fact that Nocturne has a weird relationship in its orbit with its sun and its moon. That basically gravity wells will literally make training for these things nigh impossible. So essentially the, the, the salamanders don't really rely heavily upon it because they just don't have much opportunity to actually train and use it. So essentially they just go with their incendiary short-range tactics because that's what works. And to be honest, they're fantastic at what they do, especially since they, you know, prioritize civilian life, refugees, and everyone loves them for it. Now to talk about the uncomfortable discussion that they had. So... Especially in this day and climate, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, where is this coming from? This kind of goes back to GW's um, phrasing with how they described the salamanders back in the day when, uh, I believe, first edition going forward to fifth, they mentioned the fact that the salamanders basically had skin black in color. Well... A lot of folks, they basically uh, painted their models to essentially be uh, Marines of African descent, essentially. And that was the interpretation that a lot of people had for the longest time. Then in 2007, 2006, something, something, something like that, when 5th edition came out, 5th edition pretty much said, no, they're not black in in ethnicity their skin is literally charcoal black so that kind of explains the joke between the emperor saying like i remember because he's quote unquote been there from the beginning that they had normal brown skin and not you know mutated charcoal black skin with red eyes but that was a change in fifth edition that was kind of you know, no, this is the true canon of what it's supposed to be, and it threw everyone's perceptions of that going forward, hence why the writers decided to take it into this this way to kind of discuss, like, how stupid the the explanation for that really is. Because radiation affecting the gene seed to make their skin and their eyes change to such unnatural degrees while still being perfectly functioning, you know, well, space marines... It it, it 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 just doesn't make sense. And radiation has a tendency to break down DNA, not alter it to to a different per, uh, preference. You know what I mean? So that's kind of the explanation behind this entire uh, discussion. Okay, well, it makes a lot of sense now. <laughs> yep. It's a standard skin tone. Yep. What was she thinking? Oh yeah, that. Yeah, I couldn't that, resist saying that. Oh no, that that that's fine. Because getting that reveal for the Captain General, <laughs> that was, I gotta say, when I first saw that, I was like, "This is unexpected. Why did they go this route?" But, because yeah. why not? We already saw all the other strip stodies in there. Well, in there, everything. They're everything. They still had their sashes. Oh, thank goodness. Blowing in the wind. <laughs> but yeah, the 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 one comment about them <laughs> oiling them up, <laughs> basically using his chest like muscle bongos. <laughs> bongos! Oh my gosh! 
Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I would I wouldn't take my armor off either if I was in in the Captain General's shoes. If I have to be completely honest. I mean, I I feel like I'd be pretty safe. <laughs> but I mean, armor exists for a reason. It needs to stay on. <laughs> protect protect <laughs> protect you from them. I feel like I am safe. <laughs> uh, lucky you. <laughs> Now, going into the uh, the extreme salamanders culture. Yeah, the the whole fire thing, like, are, are they a death metal band thing? Yeah, it kind yes. of... Yeah, they are definitely, um... Just yes, the answer is just yes. Yeah. The, those rituals that he was talking about, yeah, completely canon. And it's one of those things where it's, it's just like... Their hands are permanently scarred with third degree burns. Why? Just why? Not those fallen. Yeah. That's the uh salamanders in their entirety as far as uh anything worth mentioning goes, I think. Can you think of anything there, uh Chelsea? That's more Vulcan than Salamander. So there isn't. Didn't he? Um, I I think it's mentioned later, but I mean it is mentioned later. So I guess I can just wait for then to point to talk about it. Okay, then we can wait for that. Just a dumb thing Vulcan did that that I think signifies more himbo than my definition of that is more heart than brain, and the boys got that going on. Still a wonderful Primarch. I'd vote for him any day. Oh, no, I still adore him. Don't get me wrong. But he, well, he does have more heart than brain. That, that wasn't a call out. I, I'm just making a, a, a reference that if I have anyone in a point of leadership, I'd want someone who genuinely cares through and through rather than some yeah. bureaucrat. <laughs> Filament. <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and his Eldar girlfriend. No one's supposed to know about that. We all do. <laughs> <laughs> we get the newsletters. <laughs> Although, if I had to, if I had to say, yes. anyway, moving on. <laughs> okay, so that pretty much covers everything that we need to cover for episode twenty. Um. Yeah, that's uh, that's all I can think of. If there's anything else that uh, anyone wants to point out in the comments to educate us further, we are always checking the comment section to read up, learn, and interact. So we look forward to that, guys. But for now, we really need to jump out of the warp soon. Uh, Ew, we... I'm dropping more levels. I'm going to point out, this isn't something a psyker should be able to do, Okay. Yeah, and I I'm literally only doing this because the suns are here. And this is part of the reason why I didn't ask how you're doing it. I'm just grateful at the fact that you're doing it. Keep it up, please. Anything you know beyond what? I'm that. Trading the, we're trading them books for a working Geller field, so it's it's a good deal. Uh <laughs> This is next, and I'm excited about it, so we're doing it. Uh, this is just a fun little snippet, James, that they did for Kicks and Giggles. You can see the warning where um, Brother Alpha Busa is explaining it's, they were just messing around, and this was the result, and it's hilarious. Okay. Yep. Him, Elephus, Fresh, Failsnake, Garrow, Thundersikers, Zegrim, and Carl. The deranged. Ooh. Oh, good lord! Like Yu-Gi-Oh online. <laughs> of Yu-Gi-Oh online simulator. Yes, yes, and I've seen a couple of the games. It's so dumb. Oh my gosh, I love it! Also, I love it! I love it! I love it! Stolen jokes and references. Viewer discretion is advised. This is going to be a fun one to break down. It has nothing to do with the actual, like with TTS. And like this is the, part of the reason the why. Series? Yeah. Well, no, it does later. Yeah, that's the dumb thing. Okay, so it does have something to do with it, and it doesn't. Because later, this gets referenced... Oh, I bumped my mic. This gets referenced again, uh -huh. and is integrated, mm -hmm. kind of? It's, it's interesting. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna have 
canon repercussions. Yes. I cannot believe you still have not turned off Gulam and his life support. Well, I will eventually, my lord. I am tired of all your eventualities. You must do it. It is important. And I will in due time, my lord. Do it and no o o o o w. No. I will not. Are you defying me? Yes, in this particular instance, I am. Then I have no choice. I challenge you. To a game of Paradox Billiards Valstroy and Roulette Fourth Dimensional Hypercube Chess Strip Poker. I am scared. If you win, I will let it slide for now. But if I win, I will banish you to the realm of Ultramar until you have completed this mission. But... I don't even know how to play Paradox Billiards Hyperbole Chips Poker. I will have a tech priest give you the knowledge instantly with the power of science. There we go. Now you will be fit with the proper gear as well. What is this and why is it necessary? You already know so be quiet. Your deck has already been assembled based upon neural activity in your cerebrum, as well as total type casting. Deck? What? What is this even? I just had all game rules implanted directly into your mind. You already know fucking everything so stop punking and let us play. Remember the stakes. Didn't, oh yeah, I was gonna say, we're in soon as he's showing up. <laughs> oh my, my, my. If Kitten loses this duel, which no doubt will happen, he will be sent away to Ultramar for a long time. Finally, the charge will be waiting. <laughs> Actually, I am banishing you two. <laughs> so what? <laughs> this is now an Ultra game. Holy terror. Wrong. If you lose this ultra game, <laughs> and your friends will all be banished oh, to the ultra Mar My lord, perhaps you're taking this a tad bit too far. Kitten! You are our only hope! Please win! If you win, we won't steal your life for an entire week! I swear! No promises are made! Fine, I'll try to play, I guess. As long as you look away when the whole strip part of this comes to play. No promises are made! Alright, son. <laughs> we'll start things off. Draw your five cards. Okay, here goes. You know, I am looking at these cards right now, and... My lord, I don't think this is neither billiard, chess, hypercube, strip poker, Australian roulette, nor a combination of the five. This is just a children's card game. By the Milky Way's memories, I will shoot you out of a fucking cannon, unless you start playing. I'm sorry, my lord, I'll just continue. I should probably start easy and defensive. This creepy bug man man murderer will do the trick. If he is attacked, he will destroy whatever is attacked by him. I'll place this face down and end my turn. You have already lost. It is like you do not know who you are playing with. My turn. The effect of my golden ladybug activates, giving me 500 extra life points. But whatever is already the lead, and you've barely begun to start. How is he ever going to win now? Ivan activates my gas spot and sanguineous chariot, allowing me to draw five new cards in total. I love the renaming However, of the cards. However, due to the chariot, I have to discard two of the cards I have into the warp, and my chosen sacrifices shall be the golden ladybug and the shitty chaos looking brother fuck. Fortunately, throwing him in the grave warp gives me an extra card, so it is six new ones in total. Oh boy. I'm sorry, but isn't that super cheap? I mean, why wouldn't you have those cards in your deck? There's no reason- Oh my god, is he playing an Exodia deck? I destined to wield the very best cards Maybe. humanity has ever created. Oh my things are going. Yeah. <laughs> the meta is not exactly merciful in the warp sunshine. And speaking of which, I now activate Obedient School. This allows me to bring forth three different beasts from my deck, and summon them to this realm. I choose a Happy Snake, Abomination Dawn, and Horsebird. Yes, sir. They are all an infinite amount more loyal and tasteful in choice of attire compared to the three strippy tiers over there. By our blessed biceps! How glorious overlord has three servants out on the field already! And they're all lusting off the life points! How is Kitten ever going to it now? That is certainly bad news for me. My turn? Did I say I was done? Baby boy, let me tell you I am far from done serving this gold-plated shit explosion sandwich to you. 
for Yossi, I sacrifice all three of my beasts, so I can summon a much greater servant. It's been so bright! Are all the meshes cruel? Is forever really shocking at least when I travel to get part of my newest thing still is blinding me? Behold. <laughs> Make an ultra chicken. The legends were true! My chicken's effect allows me to pay all but 100 of my point lives to increase its attack to ludicrous amounts. 8400 attack points? <laughs> 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 no! We can't give up Makes me feel like using uh, uh, my... I mean, oh, my Lord turtle. Overlord only has 100 life points left now. You can do it, kitten! Just believe in the heart of the cards! Oh god. Listen, you just the heart of the cards! The heart is but one muscle you must believe in, kitten! The tongue, the pigs, and the fur, but it's all too integral parts of the card! You must put your faith in! Still not done. Oh well. god, I just realized the joke. I know, so take heart. Then to activate the Temple of the Kings. Since I am technically a king. I am allowed access to the activation of trap cards the turn I have set them, so now I activate the card DNA surgery. Now, through the power of science, my mega ultra chicken is experimented on as my great Astartes children are so he can attain a new form. Welcome your glorious golden subjugator, the winged warrior of Terra. Well, he's no longer a dragon, or a chicken. <laughs> that is because I am not done yet. I now bring a punch in the noble arms of the <laughs> Since he is now a warrior with hands and a brain larger than a walnut, he is allowed to carry weapons legally, especially marvelous weapons such as these that deny all witches that try to surpass us. That is to say, it makes him indestructible. <laughs> That's nasty. That means kids can't possibly hope to destroy it. Oh, we should never go And now, for the final touch, by throwing away a useless card, I also equip my warrior with the twin swords of flashing light. It reduces his ludicrous attack strength by 500, but now, he is allowed to attack two times in a fucking rope. Two times in a row? That means. Now, warrior, annihilate his face down and turn him down face. Ah, my spleen! My spleen! Okay, my emperor. Are you done now? Nope. My warrior may be as glamorous as a golden sun filled with glitter, but I feel this realm is not golden enough, so it is time to terraform it. With this I am allowed to take a field spell from my deck. And now, I am going to activate it. I turn this realm into an iridescent golden palace with the golden castle of Stromberg. I have never seen such radiant beauty outside my mirror before. Your mirror being my lubricated abs, of course! Uh, uh, this castle uh, forces you to summon and attack with a monster every time you enter your battle phases, and each monster that tries to attack is automatically destroyed, and half of its attack points are drawn from your life. However, this card does have a maintenance fee, as half a deck of cards has to be thrown into the graveyard every turn for it to stay active. Fortunately, it is your deck that stands for the costs. Seriously, what kind of cheap card is that? You can't have a game with a card that overpowered in it. Only I have one, so it is fair. Does anyone even play this game except you? Cinch does. Zeech is a giant nerd now, isn't he? Shut up and make your move. I need <laughs> you to get to Ultramar now, before the dishes stack up too tightly. This is really bad. If he is forced to attack, he will lose automatically. The only way he loses is by somehow destroying that caution. Foam also, the castle is indestructible. Oh shit, how is he ever going to it now? And even if he did destroy the castle, my warrior would still super murder anything he has. There is no hope. Now draw your last pathetic card so I can end this panonic. Well, okay, I guess. Oh shit, there goes half my deck. Good. It is time. Um, my lord, you did say your castle was indestructible, right? Nothing can destroy it? Whatever measly attempt you throw at it will not even scratch it. 
I guess in that case, I'll play this. Giant True Nade. All spells and traps go back to people's hands. No destructions here. What the fuck? And, uh, I summon Wind Up Kitten. And then I use its own effect so your monster goes back to your hand. W A W A W A W A W A W A W. And yes, wind up, kitten. Attack its life points directly with your wind up cat attack. <laughs> he he did it. Kitten actually did it. We're free. I am surprised by this immense force. Truly, this oh my God, don't oh, yeah. I was promised stripping. But there was none. They just <laughs> played a fucking children's card game. Ugh. Looks like I'm off the hook, my lord. Be quiet. The spin-off was dumb. Let us never speak of it again. But my lord, <laughs> I am king of the card games now. Silence. Go and wash dishes. Washing detergent in attack mode. <laughs> <laughs> That was so He's worth just it. funny. <laughs> <laughs> Watching dishes in attack mode. Just getting psychically punched. Ah, oh, that was a good way to end it. Yeah. Oh lord. <sighs> All right. Well, guys, I'd say that this was a wonderful recording session. Uh -huh. And I hope to do this again with you soon. Yes. I will have to remember to set up my heater for the next time, though. What a good idea. Yeah, you live in the cold. Yeah. <laughs> All I know is Sunday I'm going to actually be playing inside, not out in the shop. D&D! &D. <laughs> yeah! Right. To everybody watching, we love you. Have a good day, night, whatever cycle it is for you. And just stay Be safe there. in general. Yes. Yeah. Don't run out in the street covered in butter. I have questions for you now. <laughs> well, don't fry bacon while you're naked either. I that really too. have questions for you now. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. That's just basic advice. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard that one before? No. Oh, <laughs> I have. Good lord. Okay. <laughs> What? It's not like, advice. Don't, don't fry bacon with your shirt off. Okay, I won't. <laughs> it, it's just, how have you not heard that before? I don't... Good night, everyone. Okay, I'm going to take another stab at the AI. Please, no, no not a literal stab. Please, not a literal stab. No, no, no. I'm going to take the... I got to take panels off in order to get to circuitry. Then I'm going to stab it. Okay, for once, I'm actually going to intervene, and I'll help you out with this one. In the meantime, guys, if we make it out of the warp at this rate, see you next time. Initializing warp jump. Oh no. Not if I get to her first! Initiating three, two, one.